interested uh, just as we our attention was caught up uh, uh, during Boris Chomet's uh, presentation I will ask you to put on your headsets because the next presenter uh, will be online we're going to look at the lower part of the star that uh, Boris Chomet was uh, mentioning as uh, we are going uh, to have a look at uh, ADHD with a professor from the University of Montpellier. Hello, Diane pepper -Wakil. Yes, hello. Sorry not to be with you in person, but I'll do my best uh, from here in Montpellier in the south of France. And the weather, the weather is nice now. On vous avait devant devant vous, si je puis dire, dans cet auditorium so, du Saint Anne. You have here uh, more or less 150 people wearing a headset and listening to you. Très bien. Très bien. Okay. Thank you, says Mrs. Perpewakil. And there's a translation into English and Spanish. Uh, uh, a majority of French people here in the room. You can switch to the right channel. Diane, is it okay for you? Yes. We can hear you in French. Uh, so there's translation into English. Can you hear? Yes. Uh, sorry, Diane. We have to make sure everybody hears. So it's 2.25. Can you speak for about 20 minutes plus five minutes for questions? Is that okay? Well, thank you very much. Thank you. So we're going to go into details. Boris Chomet has given you quite a lot of uh, elements about uh, attention disorders. Uh, so we're going to speak rather quickly on the main symptoms. It can be uh, attention disorder being impulsive or hyperactivity to a variable degree. Sometimes you have mainly uh, uh, attention or a mixed presentation. They're not just uh, children that move a lot, but children that uh, where this has a negative impact on the school environment, the family, or socially. So we have uh, to try and see what's happening for them. So apart from these uh, main uh, symptoms, we have noticed uh, that the uh, disorders are really in the field of a self-regulation, really, about motricity or attention or emotional expression, emotional reactive, uh, reaction or uh, sleep or food. Uh, so we realize uh, that ADHD is more and more an issue of self-regulation. So let's talk about prevalence. Uh, it's a frequent uh, disorder. The uh, latest uh, studies uh, covered 204 countries for children and uh, teenagers. Uh, uh, and the prevalence was 5.41%. For adults, the figure is a bit lower, uh, between 25 and 3% because a number of people no longer uh, correspond to the criteria. Overall, contrary to what uh, the media tend to say, uh, the prevalence is rather stable over time. These figures of prevalence do not vary really a lot. What uh, is certain, as you can see here on this graph, uh, girls in pink and boys in blue, rather conventional. So the prevalence is more important, much more important in boys. But the sex ratio uh, tends to balance over uh, as age uh, uh, grows, uh, meaning that a bit more girls are being diagnosed, and this probably for uh, several reasons, and I haven't got time to go into details. We can discuss it in the chat later on. There's one 
dimension that is often associated, emotional issues. These, children, these youngsters are irritable, tend to get angry, they can, uh, their mood changes a lot, and they react very strongly to the environmental simulation, stimulations. And once they express their emotion, they have trouble toning down and controlling their expression. And sometimes this may be uh, more of a problem than the motor instability. There are other uh, disorders that are frequently associated. You should remember that when you diagnose a neurodevelopmental disorder, you should look for others because you, one tends to have an association of different disorders. Uh, so when you have an ADHD, you have to look for specific learning disorders, uh, motor coordination, uh, autistic spectrum disorders. Uh, so several uh, disorders in neurodevelopment can be associated, and then you have more psychiatric ones like anxiety, depression, or bipolar disorders. Uh, there's a, this is something that is more prevalent in uh, uh, adults and uh, ad and adolescents than in children. Uh, defiance, uh, abuse of substances, uh, tics, uh, uh, sleeping disorders, and other uh, health issues. We tend to forget to look for other uh, long-term um, diseases like obesity or um, high blood pressure or others uh, that can appear. So when we so when you talk about neurodevelopmental disorders, we tend to look at the evolution over the long term. There, they are uh, maybe age dependent, but also context dependent. Because some parents say, I don't think my child has an ADHD because when playing on a video game, uh, the behavior is perfectly normal. Well, this is uh, perfectly uh, normal because you have reinforcement uh, through the game, uh, the play, or the visual simulations that are extremely attractive for these youngsters. And uh, so uh, you have a reduction of symptoms in this type of context, immediate reinforcement or dual situation. Sometimes if you uh, do a neuropsychological test looking for attention disorders, the test is normal, but uh, even then, you are within the criteria of the diagnosis because the attention disorders will be very strong in uh, uh, everyday life, like in uh, the morning, evening, or certain school situation, where especially when they're repetitive or a bit fastidious or boring, or uh, when you have a lot of competition. And also when the child is tired, and you must think that there are differences uh, between the different members of the family. Mothers indicate more symptoms usually than fathers. This is probably due to the frequency of contact and that uh, the daily tasks uh, really are more incumbent uh, uh, still on uh, mothers than fathers. So the evolution of symptoms with age go towards uh, spontaneous uh, reduction of uh, motor hyperactivity. Spontaneously, uh, this will improve with age, with or without treatment. Obviously, much uh, better with a treatment. You have also a regression of uh, motor hyperactivity. Aggressivity also tends to uh, uh, be reduced, uh, not so much that they're less aggressive, but when they're little, uh, they are rather uh, abrupt in their gestures and, and they have less control. And with this lesser control, for example, in during recess, uh, they must hurt, they might hurt or uh, lead to a problem in socialization. The most visible uh, uh, things with age are distraction or in a lack of attention, organization, planning. 
feeling of boredom, uh, looking for uh, sensations, especially in adolescents and adults. Et l'impatience et les tensions internes, et on le you voit, ça can see uh, that uh, also impatience and inner tension. We can see that uh, these people need to move, to get out of their meetings, to walk. These are phenomena that could be uh, related to these um, impatience more than motor instability. So very quickly, the neuropsychological profiles uh, linked with ADHD, uh, they have uh, trouble uh, planning and organizing. This is uh, uh, executive uh, deficit or disorder. You have uh, an inhibition disorder. This uh, is the same as what I showed you about the self-regulation, meaning they lack barriers. You react to your environment, but you tend to react too fast and too strongly, and especially not to take into account the context in order to adapt your response uh, to uh, your environment. And this is something that is very often uh, lacking in these people uh, and a lack of tolerance uh, to the delayed reward, um, meaning that uh, if you promise uh, a child with an ADHD uh, reward uh, in the next three months, it will never work. So as I said, it's non-specific, context-dependent, and not always related to the clinical uh, symptoms themselves, which is why you don't give a diagnosis with the test. Uh, you uh, carry out a neuropsychological test to get an idea of the uh, how they operate and to know the strengths and weaknesses. But you cannot give a clinical diagnosis with this. You have to take into account the symptoms and uh, a wider analysis for a diagnosis. Does it persist at um, adulthood? Yes, but uh, probably in an attenuated fashion. Most of the time, it's difficult to have a diagnosis that corresponds to all the criteria. Obviously, with uh, the uh, uh, the classification adjusts over time, but as you can see here, people mostly retain residual symptoms, or well, that may be a hindrance. Here, this uh, slide is a bit heavy, but what I wanted to show you is that the raw causes of uh, uh, ADHD are multiple factors, and uh, the uh, genetic factors and environmental ones can vary in proportion. Some will have more genetic uh, uh, elements, others more environmental ones, some that have been exposed to some elements during pregnancy. And so you have uh, the uh, neurobiological and uh, neuropsychological phenotypes. And, and then uh, the symptoms are being looked at. And there's a lot of research being carried out because it's a multiple factor uh, disorder. So to come back more precisely to the genetic mechanism, uh, which is uh, interesting, you should remember that it is a disorder that is strongly influenced by genetic factors. And if you look at the proportion in a population, the respective proportion of environmental and genetic factors, it's over 70% for genetic factors. Some may be common variants, the variants that everybody has, when they are in a certain situation, i.e., when several of these variants, which in isolation do not uh, lead to any risk, uh, when they get together, they may have an impact on the risk of developing some symptoms. This represents about 40% uh, of uh, uh, heritability, and then 30% uh, also, uh, for example, are ADHD forms that are more influenced by rarer or low-frequency copy uh, numbers. 
and yeah, the DDX uh, 3X is one of them because it's part of uh, the pathogen variants that can be either de novo or transmitted. And uh, and then you have the rare chrono chromosomal anomalies. So, the more the genetic anomalies are important, the more symptoms you have apart from the ADHD, typical ADHD. So, you can have uh, other uh, disorders in neurodevelopment or, or other intellectual disorders. This is what I wanted to tell you. This is a, a multi uh, factor issue and uh, therefore several networks are at stake uh, the thalamus uh, the frontal part of the brain the, you have a lot of homogeneity and uh, a lot of things uh, are shown by the imaging now we see anomalies in the connections uh, for example, the uh, default networks uh, which are associated to the uh, resting state of the brain is going to uh, uh, get act to become active when you're uh, carrying out a task, which probably explains uh, part of the uh, uh, ruptures in attention or. Uh, C'est important de parler d'adaptation de l'environnement et on va uh, rentrer dans les traitements qu'on appelle uh, non médicamenteux psychosociaux. So now let's talk about the treatment that we can provide. Uh, and of course, for uh, young people, we've got the intervention of parents, we've got psychoeducation to explain what's wrong with them. We've got parenting skills, training programs, what we call PMT, and then we've also got improvements to the school environment, attentional mobilization, adaptive framework, contingency management, uh, also pr providing uh, sometimes personal support uh, or even uh, computer assistance. Uh, and that can be provided in the classroom and that can really help. Now, the basics of parent management training programs. There are different programs. I'll show you a couple. But overall, they're using the same basis. Basically, you use the lever of the parental response to modify the child's behavior. And parents really have to pay a lot of attention to the positive behavior coming from their child, because that will boost and stabilize uh, the child's progress. And of course, positive uh, attention uh, is important and reinforcing, uh, helping parents pay attention to the positive behavior, uh, relying on positive reinforcement and non-reinforcement of undesirable behavior because that can have a big impact. So if you pay a lot of attention to undesirable behavior, then that will boost that kind of behavior. It seems quite logical. And we try and reinforce parents' progress as well and boost their confidence. And we certainly help that they can come away from these programs with various strategies and just a feeling of empowerment in their strategy and feeling as a parent. I won't go through all of this. This can, uh, the, the information can be found on the slides, but there's a lot of information online as well. Now, just quickly on non-drug treatments. Um, I know I have to speed up a little bit to have time for questions, but non-drug treatments is mainly with psychotherapy, so mainly cognitive or uh, com behavioral therapy to allow the child to learn strategies and planification to solve problems. But you can also work 
or things that aren't necessarily targeting the symptoms or self-assertiveness or socializations. Uh, and you can also work on remedies, for instance, to do with the cognitive or metacognitive side of things or neurofeedback, which is also uh, useful. I won't go into too much detail on that. There's a lot of studies out there uh, and I can certainly provide you with the links for that. Now, educational facilities. Uh, this is something that's given by the French uh, education authorities. It tells you what the different possibilities are. It goes from the simplest plans, personalized uh, health plans, which needs no recognition from the medical authorities. That's automatically set up in schools. Then you've got a more specialized and tailor-made uh, strategy. Again, it's not too difficult to access this. You can just agree with the teachers and uh, usually the school doctor can validate that. Here, this is a little bit uh, more intense. So this is a file that you have to submit to the health authorities. And then the PAI, that can be quite useful if there's no learning difficulties, but the child has to take medication or if there are uh, amendments that don't come under one of these four uh, strategies. I'd now like to just talk about effectiveness data and the various CBT approaches. As for the parent management training programs, uh, we've been able to show now that they don't have direct efficiency uh, on uh, hyperactivity or impulsivity, but they do reduce the risk of oppositional behavior and they protect uh, the, and they reduce the negative strategies and they reduce that uh, side of things. And this is something that's offered systematically now all of the international recommendations seem to be pinpointing them and saying that they're useful because they have an overall impact on the care. And they also give parents parents empowerment. Now, child CBT. This studies have showed that there isn't very much a high effectiveness in the cardinal symptoms of ADHD. There's possible interest in programs combining social skills and problem solving, uh, but it's mainly used uh, to help with other therapies or strategies. And we run these kinds of programs where we try and tie things in with the school teachers to try and set up uh, strategies to help the child remain in school, reduce uh, their suffering and uh, problems with their uh, self-confidence. Uh, there are various different classroom presentations based on contingency management, probable effectiveness, but heterogeneous data mean that we can't really tell whether it's uh, efficient. Uh, the CBT for adults uh, has a better score, especially when you compare it with other kinds of treatments. The efficacy here, I would say, is average, but warning. Uh, of course, this data is for adults who were volunteers, and they were really motivated to try and take part in these studies. So that's not necessarily the case for everyone. Now, for cognitive approaches, I'll be quick because uh, it's not in favor of neurofeedback or cognitive training because programs were assessed blindly. That is to say that when you see the patient that knows what kind of treatment they are receiving, there are effects, but they are non-significant effects and they can't be applied to the different contexts. So psychostimulants, Boris mentioned these earlier, methylphenidate, that's the only that's sold in France, uh, but here this is an international conference and I'm sure you also have uh, psychostimulants that you use uh, uh, related to amphetamine. Uh, it's not sold uh, in France, uh, some of them. Uh, but they protect from the negative sides of taking uh, amphetamines, the flashes and the uh, kind of addiction that you might have. Uh, it's uh, Methylphenidate is totally secure. There's no antihistamine effects. Uh, 
prescription is fairly straightforward for um, ADHD. So I've set some different uh, psychostimulants out here. There are different kinds of drugs. And if one doesn't work, you can try another. In second line treatment, uh, sometimes we try and use Stratera or Catapressin. These drugs or medication are available, uh, but you need to, uh, they're not uh, officially accredited to the market, so you have to get specialist approval. Now, there are other health issues uh, in ADHD, training, organization of care. Uh, there's a lot to do with social representations. These children are often not properly uh, cared for. Uh, they're often from uh, poorer families. And also personalized care is a big issue as well. Uh, of course, there are... Uh, strategies to uh, hide all of the symptoms, uh, but we need to try and help this move along. Thank you, and I'm available for questions. Thank you.